YouTube automation is the business model that helped me go from zero to over $30,000 per month. This channel makes between $500 and $600 every single day. As you can see, the channel has been consistently doing that over the last couple of years. This channel makes between $15,000 and $20,000 every single month. Another channel makes between $200 and $300 every single day. In the last 365 days, we went from doing $1 a day to over $300 per day. That's a 300x. And I've got a few more channels, but let's take a look at how you can do this yourself. In this video, we're going to take a look at how YouTube automation works and how you, even as a total beginner, can get started. See, YouTube automation is not what many people think it is. It is not stealing and randomly finding some videos, putting them together, and then uploading that to your own channel. Nope, that's definitely not it. But what is it then? YouTube automation is a business model where you own a YouTube channel, multiple YouTube channels, but you don't make the videos yourself. So you're not showing your face and you're not doing any of the video creation part. You outsource that part to a freelancer team. Most of the time that will consist of a scriptwriter, voiceover, video editor, and a thumbnail designer. If you add those four content layers, together, you will have a full video. You pay that team X amount per video, you upload the video to your channel, which will then generate revenue once you're monetized. And if you can generate more revenue with those videos, then you pay the team, you'll have a profit and you have a business. Here's how you can get started. I'll divide this into six different elements, which I'll then break down later in the video. Number one is a niche. In order to get started, you must know and have a niche because you cannot just randomly upload all sorts of videos that is not going to work. You then need the content layers, meaning what do you need in order to put together a video for that niche. You then need a team, so you will need to focus on team building. You'll need a workflow so that you guys can actually get to work. You need the content delivery because if you don't receive the videos, then obviously you cannot grow your channel and then you need to upload the videos. So how do you choose your niche? I like to go with three different elements when deciding my niche. Number one is proof of concept. I want to know that there's already someone out there that has indeed done this and has got that success that I want. If you're just getting started, if you're a totally beginner, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can simply take a look at what is already working and simply use that yourself. Of course, don't directly copy it, but you can choose the same niche as other successful channels and then learn from them. Do what they do because it's already proven to work. Then I look at the 10K per month potential. I want to make sure to choose a niche where I can make at least $10,000 per month with that niche because otherwise you might get success you might be the best in that niche but if the earning cap is only $1,000 per month that is not great maybe for you 1k a month would be awesome I'm not saying that it's just that if you can get that 10k per month potential you can actually change your life and build a real big business whereas in my country with a thousand bucks per month it would be helpful but it wouldn't be life-changing so I always look for that 10K per month potential. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can take a look at the view count. So go to popular channels and see how many views they're getting, as well as take a look at the niche that they're in. For example, the finance niche is paying much more money than general vlogs or prank video. So please consider that as well when choosing your niche. Do some research on that. Number three is the startup cost as well as your interest in that niche. If you're just getting started, I can assume that you don't have a limited budget. Taking a look at the startup cost could be a great thing, especially when you found multiple niches that you want to compare and choose one. Take a look at how much money it will cost you to get started, which I'll explain in the next section. Finally, we've got the interest. For example, if you found the football niche and the finance niche, you don't know anything about football, but you know a lot about finance. Obviously, I want to choose finance because I can understand the audience because I'm interested in it as well. So what I want to see is probably what they want to see. If I do that with football, I've got no clue, for example, and then I cannot make the videos that they want to see. So always choose something that you're interested in if the potential from those niches are equal. Now that's good and all, but how do you find these niches? How do you even come up with them in the first place? There are a couple of strategies I use browsing around on the home page, using the search bar and search results, and using my own interests slash subscriptions. 
Number one is browsing around on the YouTube homepage in a private window, because when you do that, you're gonna get these random videos that are extremely popular and not based on your previous activity on your own account. So what I can now do is simply start scrolling and then look at if I can spot potential YouTube automation channels. For example, this music stuff is definitely a YouTube automation channel. There is no person behind it, meaning you can outsource it. So that could be a potential niche. Now, if I just keep scrolling, I'm probably gonna get um, a lot of different kind of niches that I can look into. So overall, this is one of these strategies that you can use. Now, as of right now, this stuff is still 100% random. What you can do is use the search bar, still in the private window, to first of all, just come up with random stuff, but also adjust the recommendations that you're getting. For example, if I just type in football and then search for football, I'm gonna get football results. These are the ranking videos for the keyword football. Now, out of this alone, I can already find all of these channels and potentially find a YouTube automation niche, right? What I can also now do is go back to the homepage and then these recommendations are gonna be more football based. As you can see, we've got a football video there, we've got another football video, we've got sports. And then if I scroll down another football video there, if I scroll down, I'm probably gonna continue to see, as you can see, more and more football videos. So what you can do is type in general keywords such as makeup, football, finance, how to make money, entrepreneurs, stuff like that. And then if you go back to your homepage, you'll start seeing recommendations based on those keywords that you just search for. I just typed in make money. As you can see, I'm now finding YouTube automation channels. This one right there, everyday money is indeed a YouTube automation channel. This is about how you can make money online and all kinds of things like that. If I scroll down, you'll see a lot of videos. This clearly is YouTube automation. As you can see, there are indeed ads playing on the video. The channel is monetized. You never know these days when an ad plays on the channel, if that channel is monetized, but I can guarantee you that this channel is monetized. They're verified as well. This is a great YouTube automation channel. You can also use these search bar results. For example, if I type in football, you're gonna see all of this stuff. What you can now do is do football A, football B, blah, blah, blah. And then if you do football Q, for example, you're gonna get football quiz and you then find the football quiz niche with all of these videos. So there's countless ways to find niches in the first place. What I just do myself is just browse around until I find some potential stuff. Now the last option was using your own interest and subscriptions. So what you can do is write down on a piece of paper what you are interested in, could be football, finance, all of that stuff. Simply write it down and then start thinking, could there be a niche or a potential video format in any of these interests? And then what you can also do is go to your own YouTube account, check out which channels you're subscribed to, and then you can potentially start a channel like that yourself because you enjoy it so you know what's going on and all of that good stuff. Once you've found a niche that you wanna get started with, it's time to write down the content layers. Now, like I just explained, normally a video consists of a script writer, a voiceover, a video editor, and a thumbnail designer. Keep in mind, the content layers may differ per niche. For example, in the screen recording niche, you don't really need a script writer as someone can just screen record and explain what's going on on the screen. But in other niches, for example, the Elon Musk niche, you definitely need a script writer, a voiceover, a video editor, and a thumbnail designer, because you can just not randomly start talking about Elon and put together a great video in the usual cash cow format. So how can you find out which content layers you need? One of the best ways to do this is to simply go to your competitors' channels and figure out what they're using to put together the video. For example, here's an Elon Musk rewind video. What I can now do is analyze the video and see what content layers they're using. If I just click on the audio, you can indeed hear a voiceover. Now, in order to create the voiceover, they need a script. So they're using a script writer, which then sends it over to the voiceover, which then reads out that text, sends it over to the video editor. The video editor put together all of these clips into a good video, and then they need a thumbnail designer because in order to click on a video, you must have an enticing photo here so that people actually click. So I want you to go to your competitors' channels, click on their videos and see which content layers they're using and write that down for yourself. Once you've got all of that stuff, you're now ready to start building your team so that they can start making videos in that niche that you've just chosen. For that, you can use multiple platforms. You've got Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer.com and PHP Jobs. 
Now, all of these are freelancer platforms where you can find freelancers that will indeed do the work for you, including the script writers, the voiceovers, the video editors, and the thumbnail designers. Now, a good question to answer right away is why would they do that for you instead of just do it themselves and make a ton of money on YouTube? First of all, they are voiceovers. They are script writers. They're doing that all day. That's their job. Doing YouTube is not just putting together a video and you'll make a million dollars. You need to understand YouTube, the algorithm, all of that stuff. In my opinion, it would be the same as asking, why do Amazon employees not just build Amazon? It's entrepreneurship and you're building a business. These people on here are freelancers and that's what they do. So that's the reason they are doing this and not just growing a channel. They're also mainly only doing one part of the job, which then is that specific thing. Now on these platforms, you can find pretty much anyone you need by simply posting a job. I've got more of that coming up on Friday, the 8th of April, as I'm opening up Automation First again, which is the academy that shows you exactly how to set up your team, where to find them, how to choose them, how to hire them, how to pay them, when to fire them, the workflow and all of that. If you're watching this after Friday, I'll leave a link down below. You'll then need a workflow because you cannot randomly hire someone and then expect them to do everything the right way and just give you videos all the time. You need to set up some kind of workflow so that the team understands how they should work and you know what to expect. For that, you can use multiple platforms. You can use Trello, ClickUp, Monday.com, or any other software. Now, the exact workflow and platform you need will depend on your niche. For example, some videos are really easy to put together, so you don't really need a complicated workflow. For some of them, you might need more people, so more people need to work together, and you'll need a different workflow. Here's a sneak peek of what we teach in the Automation First Academy. So this is Trello. This is how we usually set up our workflow. So this is a Trello board. In here, you can add your freelancers, and as you can see, we've set up all of this stuff. Now, if you're in the Automation First Academy, you can simply copy and paste this because we've created a link for you where you can do that. How this works is that you can put in a video idea, for example, top 10 best YouTube video titles in here, and your team will then start working on it. Your script writer will pick up that video, he or she will send it over here in the script writer is working on it list and the script writer will then start working on it. Next up, that person will slide it over to the completed list. It is then your job to check out that script. You can also get rid of that part and directly send it over to the voiceover, but if there are mistakes, it's gonna take more time to adjust it. So I recommend checking it, especially when you're just getting started. You can then put the label on it, which would be script approved. Once the script is approved and has that green label, the voiceover will then start working on it. So that person will slide it over to the voiceover is working on it list. Now, if there is feedback on the script, you'll slide it over here. And then once again, that person will change it and it will then end up here. Give it a green label and the voiceover will then start working on it. Now, this entire thing continues to go like this. So the voiceover will send it over to the video editor after we approved it. Then the video editor will create the video, put it in the full video is finished, and then we will approve it once again. So how that would go is like this, complete the voiceover. If I check it out and it's good, it's then finished. The editor can then use it. It will be in editor is working on it. That person will then all the way slide it over here and then that is pretty much done. I can then upload it on private and I can upload it online. You can get rid of these as they're not that important. I just decided to have them here so I can figure out if the videos went live or are still on private. So that is just a sneak peek of what we teach and what we deliver you in the Automation First Academy. And that's an example of the workflow that you can set up. Now that software was Trello. You can also go with any other one out there. Using that workflow, the team should be able to put together the videos. It's now time for the content delivery. I myself use two ways. One is Google Drive. The second one is directly uploading it to YouTube, meaning that my freelancers will directly upload them to my channel. Never give them your password though. Add them as a manager role. I'll show you how to do that. So you can add them as a manager role by going into your YouTube studio, going to your settings, clicking on permissions, and then adding them as either a manager or an editor limited. I personally do editor limited. For most people, I've got one main channel manager that I've added as a manager so that that person can see all the necessary stuff. But if you just need someone, your video editor, to upload them to your channel directly, 
then add them as an editor limited. That will give them access to uploading, but they cannot see the revenue, they cannot delete videos, none of that stuff. So you're in your studio, you click on settings, you click on permissions, and then right there, click on invite, put in the user's email, click access, and then click editor limited. Click on save, and that's how you can add them. The freelancer will then need to go to their email and accept the invitation, and that's it. The final step is uploading your video. Now this is really, really important, so pay attention. You've got optimizing the metadata, which I'll explain in a bit, and you've got your video thumbnail. Now, as I said, don't neglect this. It will make or break your video. It is really important. So how do you do the metadata? So what exactly is that in the first place? So metadata is all of the kind of data that you can give to YouTube, meaning the title you put, the description, the tags, all of that stuff. Now here's how, in my opinion, you should put together the title, description, and all of that stuff. First of all, in the description, use a short description where you use keyword. Then put a call to action to subscribe or like the video and then link to other popular videos so that you can get people to go from one video to the other and basically keep watching your videos. That is one of the best things that can happen when someone does that. Now this right there is a great example of a good description. In the first area, they've described the video and used some keywords. There's Apple, cell phone industry, Tesla, Apple, they're basically explaining what the video is about in a simple, short way. Then they've got a call to action to subscribe and turn on the notifications. And then finally, more popular videos with a link to it so that people can click to that other video and basically continue to do that. This is a perfect example. For the title, you should create a title that drives curiosity, people want to click on it, as well make it very clear what the video exactly is about. If you make a very stuffed title and it's hard to figure out what the video is about, people are less likely to click. The goat at this is Mr. Beast. He makes it impossible to not click on the video. Plus, it's always very short. The titles are very short, which, which you don't necessarily need to do, but the shorter you can make it, the better. And don't, and that doesn't mean that you should just put Elon Musk as a title, but Create titles and go with the best, comprehensive, snappy, curiosity-driven one. Then we've got the thumbnail. So with the thumbnail, it's kind of the same as the title. You want to make the audience excited for a video. You want to create curiosity so that they want to click. And it must be a clear concept. Once again, Mr. Beast is the best on YouTube with this. When you see his thumbnail, you already know what's happening. It drives curiosity. You just want to click and you get excited. So overall, your thumbnail must have those three things. Once again, spend a lot of time on this. Don't neglect it, it's really important. And then we've got tags, which I get a lot of questions about. Now tags play a minimum role, just focus on your content. It will do you much better, as you can even see in the YouTube studio. Now otherwise, it will play a minimum role in helping viewers find your video. So don't spend too much time on your tags, focus on your video. It's now time for you to do the work. I'm gonna give you some homework here. Trust me, I hate homework as well, but if it's about YouTube automation, I'll do it. I want you to do about three up to five hours of niche research on YouTube this week. Do one hour a day of research so that you can find your niche. Use the factors I gave you in order to decide which one you should go with. So just rewind the video, check it out, and then use those factors. Then, once you've done that, once you've chosen your niche after doing that research, write down the content layers that you're gonna need in order to get going. That's all I'm asking from you. Do that and then you've pretty much removed the barrier to entry to get started with YouTube automation as you've now chosen your niche and you know exactly what you need in order to get started. You then need to start making videos which you can do yourself without showing your face or you can outsource it and automate it which is the goal of YouTube automation. And for that, if you want to, you can check out the Automation First Academy, which will launch on Friday the 8th of April and close on the 15th. If you're watching this before or during that period, you can get the Automation First Academy at a discount during the first 48 hours. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It will pretty much teach you exactly step by step how to set up your own team, which will then make videos for you. This is almost a factual thing where I can almost guarantee you that if you simply follow the steps that I give you, you will have a team that makes videos for you every single week. I've pretty much shown you exactly where you should go, how you can find them, what you then should do, pretty much everything there is. Payments, hiring, 
firing workflow, which I've already shown you. You can copy that if you're in the Automation First Academy. Pretty much everything there is. It is literally a step-by-step -step blueprint. It's go to this website, then click here, then do this, then you do that. Then you want to think about this, go to this part, click on this, go to this website. That's how it works. Anyway, if you're interested in that, it will be out soon or it will be out at the time you're watching this, if you're watching this between the 8th of April and the 15th. So check it out, I'll leave a link down below. Apart from that, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, if you learned something. Thank you so much, and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.